some tourists when they visit Turkey might find certain things or situations quite surprising. That is why in this video we're going to show you 15 things that might shock you. So if you're ready, let's get started. Turkish flag almost everywhere. And this is quite true, but also it depends on the season or the festivity that we are celebrating in the country. But it is true that most of the time we will be able to find in many places in the city or in the whole country many flags, especially in some castles like historical castles or for example in Istanbul you can also find them quite, quite often, especially on the highest hills of the city. So you might be able to find them, especially if you are coming to Istanbul when it is close to the 29th of October when it is the the anniversary of the establishment of the Republic of Turkey then you will find the city basically dressed up with many many flags so this is quite shocking for some of you when are visiting uh, the country for the very first time all pharmacies in Turkey usually close on Sundays and this is quite surprising for people especially if you are visiting the country not just for a few days but if you're staying here maybe for a month or even if you're planning to live here this is something that is quite surprising because yes that is true that on sundays pharmacies are closed but you don't have to worry that doesn't mean that you cannot get ill uh, on a sunday the only thing that you have to do is to look for that pharmacy in your neighborhood where you are at the moment that will stay open. That means on duty because each neighborhood will leave one pharmacy open. So whoever needs it on a Sunday, you can directly go there. And by the way, if you're visiting Istanbul or any other province in, in Turkey, let me tell you that my husband and I, we are already giving private tours in the country. So if you're interested, we're going to be leaving the link in the description box and pinned comment. Some shops closing for the, for the time when it is the Friday prayer. And this is not in every shop or every, every place will close for the prayer time on Friday, which is around uh, midday approximately. Some shops, especially in the old peninsula or the historical places, sometimes they might close so the employees there and the staff can go and pray. Also, for example, in some neighborhoods, in very local places as well, like the smaller shops, they might have the benefit that if they want, they can just close for one or two hours, they go to pray and then they come back. Believing that when Turkish men are talking to each other, are fighting. And this is something that I experienced the very first time or my very first months when I barely knew Turkish words because also I have I have heard some people or some people have told me about this that oh are they fighting or something because Turks sometimes when when they're among friends they sound like if they're shouting to each other <laughs> but in reality they are not uh, I mean they're they're not fighting but sometimes since the language can sound a bit strong and they are they are speaking very loudly it can resemble as if they are fighting but in reality like they are just joking among them and sometimes they're, they're like ah, speaking so fast and so loud and you are like okay is there something going on are they fighting and all of a sudden they, they are just laughing you know so don't get scared more, more likely they are just joking Another thing that usually tourists get surprised is when they are going to a restaurant and after they finish having their meal, they, they will be handed a wet wipe. And this is for cleaning your hands so you can refresh and maybe if you're eating some hamburger or something that you need to eat with your hands, you can just easily clean up. And this is something that most uh, foreigners, they, they say like, oh, what is this? But this is something that I really love about Turkish culture. Even if they don't have the, weight, uh, the wet wipes, they might have a bottle with the colonia, which this is not cologne, like the typical perfume that in Western countries we know it, uh, we know about. It is not like that. This is something else. It's like, uh, like some sort of, let's call it like sanitizer. It is not sanitizer, but it is like 90% alcohol and it has a lemon uh, scent. So it is similar to, to those ones. So this is something that, for example, in my case, when I go abroad, I cannot really handle it because I got used to using these wet wipes. But here in Turkey, you will find them, find them everywhere and they are very, very useful. Men holding arms. 
And yes, this is something that many people have pointed at, for example, when they are coming for the very first time uh, to Turkey, and they see when they are walking somewhere and all of a sudden they just see two male friends walking, but they are holding their arms. And yes, this is very common in the country. This only means that they are very close friends or maybe some relatives or maybe cousins. And this only means like very close friendship. So this is not uncommon to see here in the country. And before we continue with our video, we would love to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. In case that you don't know what Surfshark is, let me tell you that this is an amazing VPN that will allow you to connect to censored websites at your current location. By connecting to a server in a different country and establishes a protected and private connection. Also, if you need to use the public Wi-Fi, you can do it without worrying because your private information will be fully protected. And in case that you need to do some important transactions from your home country, you can also do it by just exchanging your current location. What will you get? Unlimited devices all in one account and a three-day money-back guarantee. That means that there's absolutely no risk for you to try it out. All you have to do is click on the link shared in the description box and pinned comment. And use my promo code Betty Istanbul Tips for an exclusive Surfshack Black Friday deal and up to six additional months for free. This one probably is one of my favorites. And this one is about adding yogurt to almost everything including rice and this is so true if you're if you're visiting any any turkish family if you are honored to be invited to any turkish uh, house then probably you might experience this yogurt is one of the of the foods of the ingredients that you will find in every turkish table and basically we just we just mix it with almost everything it just tasted so good really i remember at first time when i mean when i saw the yogurt i was like how can you mix yogurt with rice or even yogurt with rice and beans or or foods like that and i was like no this might not taste good at all but once you try it you might become addicted because this is already me i'm addicted to that i every time i'm i i'm cooking at home rice the first thing that I see if I have is yogurt, because if I don't have yogurt in my fridge, then I don't cook rice. So this is something that, that you will see at many restaurants as well, that many Turks will mix yogurt almost with any sort of food. Finding Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's portrait almost everywhere. And in case that you don't know who Mustafa Kemal Atatürk is, well, he was the founder of the Republic of Turkey, the country that we know in present times. So for the majority of Turkish is a very important person and they really uh, respect him a lot. So you will find in many places, including schools, government institutions, even on the streets, you will find his portrait almost everywhere as well. And before we continue with our video, in case that you haven't seen the first part of this video, we're gonna be leaving the link in the description box and pinned comments. So after you finish watching this one, you can go ahead and watch the other surprising things that you might experience in Turkey. In the first part of this video, I explained to you something about the toilets. And in this time, I'm going to tell you a little bit about one little part of the toilets that we can find here. And that is something called a bidet. And many people, especially those ones coming from Western countries like Mexico, even many parts of the US, and if they have never seen this little part of the toilet, they usually get surprised and they they tend to ask like, what is this? Why, what is it, is it used for? So in case that you don't know, this little thing that you might find in the modern toilets nowadays in, in Turkey, you might find that inside. And that one is precisely when a person finishes um, their needs, you can easily clean with that one. So it is much healthier. It is much better you using it. So, but you will usually find it in these countries, some European countries, Asia as well, but it's not very common in Latin America or Mexico. So you will be able to find in every, every toilet in the country, that little bidet, that little thing inside, so you can clean up much better with water. 
This is another one that refers to food, and this is about the sugar cubes. To be honest, this one was a bit surprising to me because I thought that sugar cubes were, we were able to find them mostly everywhere and that were quite common all around the world. But to be honest, after reading many, many comments on my channel, I realized that probably is not very common. And some of you got surprised about the fact that here is only sugar cubes. It's not like in other countries or for example, that we can only find uh, mostly it's more common finding the granulated sugar. So here in Turkey, we will find both uh, forms, the granulated and the sugar cubes, but it's most it's most common the sugar cubes so that one you will put it in teas mostly everywhere so that is true here in Turkey is, is more common the sugar cubes and let me tell you something as well what is something that I even experienced here um, last year when I traveled to eastern Anatolia specifically to Erzurum province there they have a very different way of drinking um, the black tea so what i was told and that a person living there uh, thought me was that first before drinking like the black tea like your glass of of tea first you lick like the sugar cube or you just put it in your mouth you just lick it a bit and then you you drink from the from the tea so that was very interesting very different to me so that is something that you might experience if you go to eastern anatolia as well the next one is exclusively for those who are not Muslims, who have some other religion, beliefs, or if you don't have any religion. But this is about the call to prayer. And this also happened to me when I first arrived in the country. This really surprised me in a good way. This wasn't nothing negative. I was so surprised. And I, I remember like the first months when I was here, even I remember that where I was living back in, in, in the day, I would just go into the balcony whenever it was the call to prayer time. And I would just go into the balcony and sitting there and just enjoy the call to prayer because somehow like I liked it. I liked it. And especially also the call to prayer, the one, the first one very early in the morning, around 5.30, 6 in the morning. That one also, I remember that I, I, it was a bit shocking for me because it was waking me up. But of course, at this point, I don't, I don't hear it any, anymore. But at first, that was something very, very so surprising. And also, I have heard and read that many people also get surprised by the call to prayer. And they really admire it because also they mention about that it is like if all the mosques and the minarets are just replying to each other. Like you can hear one and then like the next one. So it is something very interesting, especially for us that we're not Muslims and at first we have never visited any other Muslim country and then we come here and we experience it. So that is something surprising for us. This one is something else that also we have we have heard so many comments also uh, from some guests with the, that we have given tours here. They have comment about it and it is about the amount of people that they were able to see walking on the streets with a rhinoplasty, with her transplant or with chin surgery or any sort of surgery. So that is so true because in case that you don't know, Turkey is one of the countries that for the past years have been leadership in this medical tourism or health tourism. So here, if you need to do any heart transplant or even if you want a rhinoplasty or nose, uh, or nose job, or even teeth whitening, whitening, you can easily do it here because first of all, we most most of the time there are ma there are many good doctors, and also the price is very affordable when you compare it to many other countries like in the U.S., in the U.K., or many European countries. So that is why whenever you come here, pay attention to that. And if you are leaving Turkey, if you are going back to your home country, and if you are taking uh, your flight with Turkish Airlines, just pay attention because more likely you will see a Turkish Airlines. Like many passengers, you will see them uh, with a bandage on, on the hair. So just pay attention to that. This one, to be honest, sometimes it makes me a little bit sad because it is unfortunate that because of certain people, the country or the city like Istanbul has gained kind of a bad reputation because of the amount of, of scammers that 
they encounter during their trip, especially with the taxi drivers. And yes, I agree with them. Like you will find scammers, but that doesn't mean that every person or every Turkish will be a scammer or a bad person. That is not so true. And if you have travel outside of Istanbul and especially to the smaller provinces, the smaller cities, you'll find that people are so warm, are so welcoming and so nice. So it is so unfair sometimes claiming that all Turkish are bad people, that all are horrible. And precisely, I just received one comment about that, that don't visit Turkey, all Turkish are horrible. And I was just like, okay, it's like if we say that all Mexicans are dealers or or any other nation is this and that, it's not like that. Just because you have the bad luck of encountering a few bad people, that doesn't mean that everybody will be will be a bad person in the country. Yes, there are bad ones, but most of the time you will also find excellent people, warm and the people that will be willing to help you. And this is about the public transportation. I have read so many times uh, about people getting surprised for how crowded public transportation sometimes can be in Istanbul. And that is so true. But I will tell you, welcome to Istanbul with where we have probably like 25 million inhabitants, <laughs> plus all the tourism that luckily we have been receiving a lot of, of tourists uh, for the past years. And yes, I mean, this is so true, especially in the most touristy areas. And when there are many cruise ships as well, docking in Istanbul at the same time, like two or three all together in the old peninsula, then you will find that, yeah, the public transportation, especially the tram uh, T1, which is the one connecting the old peninsula with, with almost Galata area, you'll find out that, yeah, it is very, very crowded. So don't get surprised if you happen to, to see it. Unfortunately, yes, it is very crowded, especially at peak times. And also, let me tell you that when there is a public holiday, usually here the public transportation is free, only not for tourists. It is free for residents and for, and for Turkish citizens. So when the public transportation is free for us, usually is when everybody like gets advantage and try to go uh, get together with friends, visit places, go to restaurants. So that is why you will find usually the public transportation even more crowded. So yes, welcome to Istanbul, a very crowded city. Let us know in comments below what other things you found surprising when you visited Turkey. If you liked the video and found it useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you want to keep watching more videos like this about Istanbul and Turkey every week. See you next time. Bye-bye.